Okay, back in the back office. Now, let's reload this page. Okay, we've got a totally different setup here now because it's recognized that the .htaccess file is where it needs to be. So we've already gone through part of this. Uh, you can only use it if there's an Apache web server. It'll generate the .htaccess file. And I'll show you what that means. But basically, what it means is taking the blank file and adding a bunch of stuff that PrestaShop will put into your blank file that will give you the ability to do URL rewriting and catch the 404 errors. So now, this is what we want to do. We want to click on this optimization tick box. And this is something that's available in 1.4, but not in 1.3 and below. So you can see it's going to add directives to your .htaccess file, which is why we needed one there in the first place. And it should improve the cache and compression. Now, as far as the specific configuration is concerned, with certain hosts, you might need to do specific configuration. But with Bluehost, uh, the host that I'm using, I don't need to do that. So I'm not exactly sure what to tell you to do there, unless you specifically already know what to do. So I'm not going to worry about that for now. OK, it says generate your .ht access file by clicking the following button. Now before you click that, just remember I told you earlier that if you already have one, it will overwrite it. So if you have one, or you had one created for you through a, um, a vendor, then you better be careful. Because if you've got some special stuff in there, this is going to totally erase it and put in what uh, the Presta Shop generate .ht access file button will put in there. So just know that before you do it. OK, let's go ahead and click on this button. It says update successful, which means that we just generated our .ht access file. Now, what does that mean exactly? So let's go to the file. OK, here's our .ht access file. I'm going to view this in my text editor that I have, which is eText editor. OK, now, even though this is a different text editor, it was it's still completely it, it was completely blank before we hit that generate .ht access file button. So what you can see here, let me see if I can get this a little bit bigger. OK. It says this .ht access file is automatically generated by PrestaShop e-commerce open source solution. And all of this stuff was added in when we hit that button. So these are all of our friendly URL rewriting rules here. Okay, And if you kind of look at it, you can see that there's different rules. Like here's language English, page not found, and it's a bunch of other stuff that I really don't understand. But these are basically just rewriting rules for English. And then you can see here's French rewriting rules, and here's Spanish rewriting rules. So if you have other uh, languages or translations installed, you may get some different information. Okay. Here's a group of rewritables up on top, too, that I don't really have a clue what they do. But the important thing is PrestaShop knows what it's doing. So this just shows you that you've got the good stuff in there. OK. Now, down here in this section, from about here to here, this is where all of the good stuff happens as far as browser caching and gzip enable and the e-tag is concerned. This is where you can get your performance gain at least from, for your customers, by sending them compressed files, and then also by helping them by caching files on their computer versus downloading them every time. So it's not really important that you understand what all this stuff means, uh, but, but this is basically what it does. OK, this part up here deals with browser caching. And it essentially, if you look at it, it says access plus one, one month, one month, one month. Here's one week. Here's one year. So this essentially tells uh, the client's browser how long to cache these particular items. You can see that some of them are, like for instance, this is a GIF. Okay, uh, that's a JPEG file. There's a PNG. Here's a here's a CSS, which is just a, you know, just your style sheet. This is some JavaScript, 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 and here is an icon. So it's going to have your client's browser cache icons for a year, uh, this, this particular JavaScript for a week, this particular JavaScript for a week. Same thing with this one. And then on your CSS, PNG, JPEG, and GIF, it's going to be for a, a month. Oh, I'm sorry, CSS was one week. So those are the rules around caching.
Now here is the file tag. So here's the file e tag that we discussed earlier. And that's what's going to actually check to see if you made any modifications to your store. And if you did, it's going to download a new version instead of using the cached version in the customer's browser. So this is pretty good to have in there because if you don't have it in there, the customer may be browsing off of an old image or an old script or something like that, and that's not very helpful. Okay, and then this last part, uh, once again, really not important to know what the technical uh, terms mean, but this deals with the gzip compression in this area right here. And essentially what it's doing is it's telling, to, telling it to compress or deflate particular types of components. For instance, the HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and so on. So if your client's browser requests a compressed version of those files, you'll be able to give that to them. Okay, so that's really all there is to it, to creating a .ht access file that has browser caching and e-tags and gzip enabled. So works great for 1.4, but now what do we do about 1.3? Because we don't have an option in 1.3 to click a little box and have this gener generated for us automatically. It's very simple. If uh, you have the ability to create this in 1.4, all you have to do is copy and paste. But if you don't, I'm going to include it in the comments section, or not in the comments section, but I'm going to include it in the article that precedes this video on my website. So you should have all the resources you need to make it pretty easy. But let's see what we've got available in one of my 1.3 stores. Okay, I've used my FTP client to navigate to one of my version 1.3 stores. And we're going to use this version right here. So these are all the files and folders that you will find in a typical download. And I just wanted to show you that I don't currently have a .ht access file in there because it would be right in this space right here. So let's just go ahead and grab this HT access file out here in my desktop which is a blank HT access file and we'll drop it in our 1.36 store and there it brought it up right there okay now just like in version 1.4 um, PrestaShop recommends that you have a permission level of 666 well my host will allow me to operate this particular file on a 644 and that's actually a more secure setting than 666. So if you have trouble, you might need to set your permissions to 666. But for me, I can use a 644. And this is a preferable setting because of its higher security level. OK, I'm going to navigate to the back office of my version 1.3 store. And I'll be back when I get there. All right, we're in the back office of my 1.36 demonstration store. So once again, let's go to preferences, just like we did in the 1.4 version. And then we'll scroll down. Let's enable friendly URLs while we're at it. Scroll down, save that. Scroll back down one more time. And let's generate that .ht access file. Now remember, we just placed it where it needed to be, so this is going to come up a little differently. You can see that we got the generate the bu the generate button right away. Well, if we had not put that .ht access file um, in the root like it had told us to do in the 1.4 version, we wouldn't have gotten this. We would have been told to make a blank .ht access file and put it in the root directory. So that's all done. It's really simple. All we need to do is generate the .ht access file here. Once again, don't forget, if you do have an old .ht access file in your 1.36 version, uh, or whatever version you're using, clicking this button will delete it. So I don't have one. I'm going to click it. Update is successful. All right. So let's go look at that 1.36, uh, the .ht access file that we just created. All right, I'm in my 1.360 shop. Here is the .ht access file. Let's open this up and click View Edit. And I'm going to close some of these others here. OK, so this is the one that we just created. And uh, this is the one right here 
that we created in our 1.4 store. So you can see that there is a very significant difference. First off, the rewrite rules in 1.36, which you're looking at right now, there's only this many of them. And if we go back over to the 1.4 version, there are way more. And most of them relate around these language editions. So the language English, the language French, the language Spanish. But I'm scrolling down quite a bit, and you can see there's just a whole bunch of extra stuff in there. So I'm not really sure if I should be putting these language rewrite rules in there. So for now, I'm not going to worry about it. But essentially what we want to do is below this section right here, this catch 404 errors, this is where we want to add in the stuff from our 1.4 version. So I'm going to click over here. And I'm just going to, you can see here's the catch 404 errors. I'm just going to copy this up to this point. I guess I'll get that extra line break. I'm going to copy it. And we'll go over to this version of it. And we'll paste it. And there we go. Now we have manually installed in our 1.3 version.ht access file. We have manually installed gzip compression. We have got our etag rule in there. And we also have our caching rules. So you definitely want to save this. Let's go ahead and I'm going to just do a save as. I'm going to move it to my desktop. And I'm just going to call this htaccess. We'll overwrite the existing htaccess file that's there. Yes, I do want to save it. So we'll minimize this and minimize this background here. OK, now this new htaccess file, if we open, let's open this up just so you can see it. OK, now it's got all these rules in here that we added in. That was blank before. Now it's got all this good stuff. In. All right, let's minimize this. Now we just want to replace in the 1.3 store that we've got. Let's take that HD access file, pull it over here. It'll overwrite it. Yes, I do want to overwrite. Let's just view it to be sure. Now you can see before there was only this much in there. OK? And now we've added in these new rewrite rules. So we're in pretty good shape. Now we've uh, just got the same capacity to, to gzip those files and do all the other cool things that should improve performance on our 1.36 store. OK. That's really all there is to it. And uh, if you have any questions, just please leave a comment down below. And I'll be happy to help where I can. Thanks for spending time with another Presta training tutorial, and thanks again to another Cock Construction for all their help in the content creation of this video. Really appreciate it, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.